So if I asked my teenager where he was last night, and he said to me, I was out driving around alone all night with my phone switched off. Didn't interact with a single person. Let's just say it would be the beginning of our conversation. It would not be the end of it. Mm -hmm. But that's exactly what Brian Koberger told an Idaho court tonight by way of an alibi for the murders of four university students in their off-campus house. And I'm going to read you, word for word, some of the latest filing, but I want to get Richard Block in here with me. He's a criminal defense attorney, practices in Idaho. So, Richard, this happened late this evening, Eastern Time, and I want to read exactly what Ann Taylor filed with the court, because the judge pushed when they said they would file an alibi and said he was out driving around. Uh, the judge said, more details, please. And this is what Ann Taylor uh, filed uh, regarding Brian's habit of nighttime driving. Quote, after the school year began, Mr. Koberger was busy with classes and work at Washington State University, and his running and hiking decreased, but did not stop. Instead, his nighttime drives increased. This is supported by data from Mr. Koberger's phone, showing him in the countryside late at night and or in the early morning on several occasions. The phone data includes numerous photographs taken on several different late evenings and early mornings, including in November, depicting the night sky. Mr. Koberger was out driving in the early morning hours of November 13, 2022, as he often did to hike and run and or see the moon and the stars. He drove through the area south of Pullman, Washington, west of Moscow, Idaho, including Wawahi Park. Um, so, Richard Block, just, just what's your reaction to that as a lawyer? So, I, obviously, it's not the strongest alibi we've ever heard, right? It's not, I Did was think? at the Dodge game and here's the video. But it's not as weak as it sounds. You got to remember a couple things. First of all, the night sky in Idaho is terrific. There's reasons people come out here to go <laughs> see the night sky. We have craters of the moon out here. It's really great. And second, we've got a little bit of cooperation here. We have the photos from his phone that they're telling us that they have, including him taking pictures of the night sky in November. So this is apparently something he does. Uh, the second part of that that I think is really interesting is later in that, in that filing is when they're talking about how much evidence they don't have because they don't have all the stuff off the phone, which may show more of this. So... It's not as weak as it sounds right off the bat. It's not the greatest okay, explanation. Okay, you're so good at your job. <laughs> you are really good at it. If I ever murder someone, I'm hiring you. Um, but I do want to say this. I've been out late at night a lot as well. And I'm not worried about someone calling me and interrupting my stargazing at 4 o'clock in the morning. So I don't see a need to turn my phone off exactly in the hour that those students were murdered. And one of the other propensities he has is to drive around um, ogling that house because they have plenty of digital evidence from his phone that pinged him at or around that house multiple times in the three to four months prior to those murders. Isn't that a little bit troublesome and sort of also diminishes this adorable story? Well, we obviously don't know how strong all that evidence is, just like we don't know how strong the defense's evidence is. We're really, most of the things that we've heard come from from the police, which are an incredibly biased source. They never tell the whole story. I don't know how many times I've seen an affidavit of probable cause that turned out to be uh, misrepresentation after misrepresentation after misrepresentation. So let's take that, I have what they said with the grain of salt. That being said, you know, these are problems in the case. These are things that the defense is gonna have to deal with and have to try and explain. Doesn't mean they don't have an alibi, and doesn't mean it's not important that they let the judge know about if this, because there's a rule in that says yeah. you have to. If I were a juror, I wouldn't want a grain of salt. I want a big old bag of salt if I heard that story in that courtroom. I would be mad. I would think about those four murdered victims and I would think, is that all you've got? Uh, you know, it, it's just the way people think. But you know what? Shoot for the moon because they always say, even if you miss, you'll end up in the stars. Um, it's so good of you always to join me. Thank you so much, Richard Block. Thanks for having me. Thank you for watching.
Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.